Welcome back to my channel, guys. Would this even be a sit-down chat video on my channel if I didn't have coffee with me? <laughs> Every time I sit down to film a sit-down video, I have to have a cup of coffee with me. Is it just me? Is it really echoey in here right now? I just noticed it's really echoey in this room. <laughs> That's annoying and I, I don't even have anywhere to throw a blanket or like a pillow to help suppress the noise. It's just another sign for me to get a real microphone. <laughs> In case you guys did not notice, my walls are white. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I painted and I got this room done in one day. I'm so happy. It was the last room on my list for painting and I'm so happy with how it turned out. It makes the floors look even more warm. I feel like it draws the eye more to my favorite piece of art in the house. Obviously the white background I much more prefer than like the purple undertone beige that was in this room beforehand. So anyways I'm not going to talk your guys ear off about painting or coffee. We're just going to jump right into this video. This is a nice wife talk video. You don't have to be married to watch this video. Even before I got married or before I was even dating, I liked learning about different things in marriage and, and getting different tools for when I would eventually be married someday. Instead of like packing on a whole ton of information within a very short period of time and like premarital counseling, I kind of started my own sort of version of that years prior prior to and paid attention to different things that either my mom did for my dad or my dad did for my mom or other people I knew who were married and just taking notice of some of the things they did for one another. This is really bright. I'm actually going to turn this down. And then obviously as my friends and siblings started dating, which was like way before I started dating, I took note of like, okay, I don't wanna do that and I do wanna do that and I don't want that and I do want this. So that combined with almost five years of marriage has made me a complete and other expert in the subject of marriage. In case you couldn't catch my sarcasm, that was sarcasm. I am learning every day more and more about marriage, but I am a big fan of marriage. If you know me, you know I'm a huge huge fan of marriage, especially my marriage, all purely by the grace of God. I have a beautiful, wonderful, fun, happy marriage. Of course, we've had our difficult times. We've had disagreements. We have had arguments in the past, but overall, Eli and I really do have a really beautiful, loving, selfless, gracious marriage. And I'm so blessed and I'm so thankful I get to say that. And I know not everybody is in that boat. And who knows, maybe this video will give you some advice or some help or some inspiration. I don't know. I'm just here to share with you guys some things that I do to serve and show love and respect to my husband. I only have five things listed today. I didn't want to do like a crazy long list of things. I wanted to keep this video short and sweet because so often my videos have been like 20 minutes long when they're just a sit down video and I'm like, that's really long. And I mean, I'm sure some of you guys enjoy that, but I'm sure other people are like, this is really long. So I'm trying to keep things minimal today and we'll see how quickly I can go through this list. It's unfortunate how the culture in which we live has kind of taken marriage and twisted it a whole lot. And one of the things it has twisted out or into marriage or has, you know, kind of messed up is the idea that instead of marriage being this selfless, gracious, loving relationship, covenant relationship between a man and a woman, it's become a lot more selfish, I've noticed. Just for a woman to say, oh, I serve my husband, there's this automatic reaction of, oh, you are a Depressed, you are being emotionally abused. You must not have like opinions on anything. Almost kind of this ancient times, women had no roles or abilities at all. And, and that's kind of what is assumed when I tell people I serve my husband. But that's not it at all. In fact, my husband serves me as much as I serve him. We don't have a give and take relationship. We have a give relationship. Eli gives to me, I give to him, whether it be really small things, but knowing that the other person appreciates it and feels loved and respected by it is so important to us. And we really make that effort to go that extra step or that extra mile or that extra centimeter in order to make our spouse feel loved and respected, of course. Me serving my husband isn't degrading. It doesn't make me less of a human being. It doesn't make me less important. Eli's not this like horrible 
whole I am the top, I am the best, you will serve me slave kind of guy. He's not sitting on his super, super high horse living life to the best while his wife brings him all of his favorite foods on a golden platter while I wear my apron all day. I actually hardly ever wear an apron. I should do that more when I'm cooking because I get flour all over my shirts. <laughs> That's not how our relationship works. We are equal. We are both in this together. And like I said before, Eli serves me as much as I serve him. These five things are some super simple, non-time consuming, but so rewarding and so beneficial types of things to do for your spouse to show them that you respect them, that you love them, that you appreciate them, that you value them. And as women, we especially need that love. At least I know for myself, I need to feel appreciated and valued by my husband. And I know that that's also important to him. It's more important to him that I respect him over love him. I highly respect him and I really love him, but I definitely need some more love and he definitely needs some more respect. So everyone's different. And these five things I'm going to list off might not work in your home, in your marriage, but I do encourage you if they don't to maybe find one or two or three or four or five things that you can do for your spouse. If you're a husband, things you can do for your wife. If you're the wife, things you can do for your husband to show them that you love them, respect them, value and appreciate them. I'm going to put my coffee down. Otherwise I'm going to spill it. <laughs> so let's just jump right into the five things that I do in my marriage to show Eli all those things. When I was a kid, we always had a like 10 or five minute cleanup. And it was at the end of the day, it was before my dad was going to be home. We always knew he was home at a specific time. It would be like 10 minutes before he got home or if we forgot five minutes before he got home and we'd be like, okay, everyone stop what you're doing. Just tidy things up in the living room, kitchen, dining room area. It wouldn't have to be like in our bedrooms, but just spaces that my dad was going to be in because my dad liked coming home to cleanliness. He had a job where he went into people's homes a lot and my dad is a clean freak. Like ask him, he'll tell you he's a clean freak. He likes it when things are in their place, when it's organized because he worked in other people's homes and he saw often the condition in which some people lived. He found that very stressful. And so for him to come home to a clean, organized, like mostly clean, like if there's toys and some things out of place, whatever, but just mostly chaos free space, that was very important to him. And so my mom really took on that role to make sure that he came home to that. This was actually something I didn't realize Eli valued until a few months ago. Sometimes Eli would come home to a crazy mess because the kids were playing in the living room or I just hadn't gotten around to cleaning things up yet a bit. And I didn't really put the effort into cleaning things up because I didn't think he cared too much. And then one day he just shared with me that he really like values and appreciates it when he comes home to a clean space. And knowing that for me was like, okay, this is a way I can show my husband that I love and appreciate him, especially that he goes out and works and provides for us that I can stay home with the kids. It'll take me five minutes, five, 10 minutes. We don't have a big house. It doesn't take that long. Just get on the floor, clean up. Even the girls as well, they're really good. We sing the Daniel Tiger cleanup song and they get really excited, especially Charlotte. And she's like, oh, let's clean up. And the three of us are able to work together in those like five, 10 minutes to just tidy things up a bit, just a little bit. So when Eli comes home, it's stress-free and it's clean and he's not stepping on toys everywhere. And it's something so small. It takes up five minutes of my time and it means a lot to him. It shows him that I care about him enough to make the effort to stop five minutes before he gets home from work to clean up the living room and the dining room for him. It's kind of hard to clean up the kitchen because I'm usually making dinner at this time. It's going to be messy, <laughs> but it's something small. It's something easy and so not at all time consuming. Eli's love language, this is quite hilarious. My order of the five love languages is completely opposite to Eli's order of the five love languages. His last love language is quality time. And that's my first one. <laughs> His like fourth is words of encouragement. And that's my second one. Both of us have physical touch for our middle. Acts of service is his second one and my fourth one. And then gift giving is his first one and my last one. So we are completely polar opposite. But great thing about Eli, in order to really love him in that love language of buying him things, I don't have to spend a whole ton of money in order to make him feel loved that way. For example, Eli loves pepperoncini peppers. I think that's what they're called. They're like pickled spicy peppers or something. I, I don't 
don't even know what they are. All I know is they smell gross. They, mm, they're, <sighs> once that jar is open, it has taken over the kitchen and it is gnarly. I am not a fan, but Eli loves them and he just so enjoys snacking on them. So something so simple for me to do is when I'm at the grocery store, walk down the aisle where the pepperoncini peppers are and get a jar of them for him. And he so appreciates that. If I don't get him peppers, I'll get him crackers or I'll get him his favorite chips or I'll get him chocolate milk. <laughs> Small things like that he so appreciates because he knows that I put in that extra effort to do that for him. It doesn't cost a lot of money, especially if you have maybe like five different things that your spouse really likes and then you go to the store and hopefully maybe one of them will be on sale and it's even cheaper, but it doesn't cost cost a lot for me to buy a jar of pepperoncini peppers for him. He just feels so loved by it because again, his love language is gift giving. Ugh gift giving. I don't know why, but it is. And acts of service is his second. So that's like me acting and doing something for him to serve him by buying him pepperoncini peppers. You guys know, especially on Instagram, y'all know I love talking about my husband. He is like my favorite subject to discuss. Him and my kids. I love talking about Eli. <laughs> Even though like words of encouragement or affirmation is one of his lesser love languages, I still do it because I want him to know that I don't go around talking smack about him. There's really nothing I can talk smack about, but that I talk him up and that I tell people how amazing he is. And I share with people the things that Eli does for me or for the girls or that he's a hard worker and how proud I am for the job that he has and for reaching that. I talk him up in front of his own family. I talk him up in front of our friends and I, very important, talk him up in front of our girls. I will constantly constantly be referring to Eli as uh, Papa is Mama's best friend, isn't Papa the best? Oh, we just love Papa. Whenever I pray with the girls, we always thank the Lord for Papa. So they're growing up knowing that I have a insane amount of respect and love for Eli. And so for Eli to hear that, that I'm teaching my kids how much I love and respect him and that I'm just singing his praise in front of his family, our friends, my family, anybody at the grocery store who will talk to me. I I will talk him up and that is huge it's amazing how much words can encourage your husband or vice versa how much your words can encourage your wife it's that affirmation it's that appreciation showing that we value them it costs you nothing it costs absolutely nothing for you to talk about how wonderful your husband is or even if you are in a marriage that is struggling right now and maybe your husband doesn't do a ton of great things for you even just to not talk him down, never talk your husband down ever. And there's a difference between talking your husband down and maybe you and your husband having a disagreement and going to somebody you trust for advice. I have done that in the past. Talking smack and being respectful but honest about a disagreement you're having with your husband are two totally different things. As an example, if I'm having an argument with Eli over, I don't know, how to cook meat, which we don't disagree about that. We both like meat. I could talk smack about Eli and be like, oh, he's such a wuss. He won't make it medium rare. He always overcooks it. He sucks. Like, can he just cook meat? That's rude. That is degrading. That is shaming. That makes me look horrible. Or I can be like, you know, I just, he tries so hard and, and he really likes his meat cooked the whole way through when we're having steaks and I just like it medium rare and we're kind of having a bit of an argument about how to cook our meat. And you know, if I'm speaking in love and saying like, he's making the effort, that's totally different different than talking smack. So the last thing you want to do is talk smack about your husband. You want to lift him up and you want to treat him with respect. And Eli does the exact same thing for me. So talking Eli up in front of anyone and everyone shows him verbally how much I respect him and that I respect him so much I'm willing to let everyone know how amazing he is. Another way I serve Eli, and this one is more so in his role of a spiritual leader, I serve serve him in his being in that role by praying for him and challenging him in the word and not just like praying on my own, not just quietly in my head, I openly pray for him. If Eli's home and we're about to have lunch and, and I'm praying, I will pray and thank the Lord for Papa. Like I had mentioned before, that the Lord would give him wisdom and that the Lord would continue to mold and shape Eli. I open 
genuinely pray for Eli and that also shows him that I take the time to ask the Lord to give Eli strength, to give him wisdom, to challenge him to learn more in the word, just all those kind of things. And I mean, I know for myself, if somebody tells me like, hey, I've just been praying for you lately, that's huge for me. Thank you for taking that time in prayer to think of me and to ask the Lord to give me patience or help me have a good day or something, right? And so it does the same for Eli and it shows that I respect him. And I don't just ask God to like continue to, you know, form Eli or can you make him like a little more wise? Could you make him like a little bit better looking, which is not really possible. Do you just like make him like this? I don't just pray for God to like change him, <laughs> but I also take the time to thank God for all the amazing things he's done in Eli's life and for who he has molded Eli to at this time and thank God for providing Eli with a job and the work ethic to provide for us. Again, no money and not a lot of time or effort to openly pray for your husband and thank the Lord for him in front of him. Okay, last one, number five. I do Eli's laundry, I clean the floors, I do all the dusting, I keep things organized, I make him dinner, I handle all of the financial things of our family, and I do all of it with a joyful heart. I never throw in Eli's face the fact that I do Eli's laundry. I never have anger when I clean the floors. I don't get mad because I handle all the finances. I do everything with a joyful heart and because it's my pleasure to serve him in those ways. And here's the thing, I could do all those things still and not have a joyful heart and Eli is not going to feel respected. He's not going to really appreciate me doing those things because I have a bad attitude. He's not gonna be like, wow, my wife, she's amazing. She just grumbles and complains all day long while folding my laundry. He's not gonna feel loved, respected, appreciated, or valued if I have a grumbled, complainy, angry heart while I do house chores. <laughs> but if I have a joyful heart and I'm thankful, like, wow, Wow, thank you Lord that you gave me a husband that I can actually do his laundry and thank you that Eli has this awesome job where I can stay home and do the cleaning and if I have a joyful heart through all of it he's just gonna be like wow my wife does all this stuff my wife like is so happy to do my laundry and to make sure the house is tidy when I get home and to make me dinner and to handle the finances which I find so fun anyways that speaks so much more to him if I do all these things with a joyful heart and not a crappy one. And like I said before guys, Eli in turn does so many things for me and that'll probably be another video down the road of things Eli does to serve me that shows me how much he loves, respects, values, and appreciates me as his wife. Marriage is so fun. Marriage is awesome. I highly recommend marriage. <laughs> and I hope maybe some of these things gave you guys some inspiration. There's some ideas of how you can better serve your spouse. And if you learned absolutely nothing from this video, thanks for sticking around. <laughs> if there are any marital subjects you guys would love to hear me talk about, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for clicking on my face. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button and that like button, and I will see you guys in my next video.